I just read the greatest story of all time. <laughs> the greatest. Hold up. Hold up. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Martin. Martin was born in 316 in what eventually would become Hungary. His father was a Roman soldier, and the law at the time said that when he died, Martin would have to take his place in the army. This brought him to Gaul, or modern-day France. Now, Martin never wanted to join the army. He was very young at the time, and he had just started practicing Christianity, so he wanted to help people rather than fight them. Once, when he was going through the streets of a city, in the dead of winter, in the bitter cold, he came across a beggar, an old man with hardly anything to wear and nothing to eat, and having no money to give him himself, Martin took his sword and cut his own cloak in half and gave half to the man so he could wear it and try and keep away some of the chill. That very night, Martin had a dream. In the dream, he saw Jesus Christ, and he was wearing the half of the cloak that he had given the man. Jesus turned to his angels and disciples and said, Look what young Martin has done for me. He has given me his own cloak. And when Martin woke up, he found that his cloak was made whole again. It was a miracle. And he jumped right up and rushed out to get baptized and devote his life entirely to Christianity. Of course, the next morning when Martin went to his commanders and said, Hey, uh, this soldier thing isn't working out for me, guys. I'm a soldier of Christ now. I don't belong here. I don't want to fight anymore. They said, Stuff it, kid. You're a coward. Martin replied, I am not. Put me on the front lines and put a cross in my hand instead of a sword, and I will show you how much of a coward I am. They were not pleased. They threw him in prison for insubordination and processed him out of the army. Once he was free to go, Martin sought a local bishop and asked to be his student. The bishop gave Martin a plot of land, where he built his own little hut, and made himself a little hair shirt, and spent his days in blissful solitude, praying to God, denying earthly pleasures, and being happy. Life was good. But then these pesky townsfolk heard about how pious and how devoted Martin was, and wanted to learn from him. So they, too, went to his little plot of land and built their own little huts. And eventually this grew into the first monastic community in France. One day, the bishop died, and the people of the land had to choose a new one, and everyone wanted Martin. Problem was, Martin didn't want to be bishop. He wanted to live alone, in peace and quiet, and be close to God. But the people wouldn't take no for an answer. And they knew that they couldn't convince him. Now, by this time, Martin had developed a reputation for all the good old-timey miracles, faith healings, exorcisms, raising the dead, you, you name it. So, the townsfolk told him, There is a sick man in Tours, one of the cities in Gaul. Please go to him, heal him. And of course, Martin, being just the great guy that he is, jumped right up and ran out to go heal the man. When he got to the church where the sick man was supposedly waiting, Martin went inside. The townsfolk closed and locked the door behind him. <laughs> inside, <laughs> all these bishops were waiting, <laughs> and they ordained Martin <laughs> against his will. <laughs> I've tried to say that sentence four times and I can't do, do it without laughing. They ambushed him and blessed him. <laughs> Surprise, you're the bishop now. Um, anyway, there's an alternate version of the story, a Germanic version of the story, where Martin catches wind of the plot before he reaches the church and goes to hide, literally physically hide, in a barn. 
and it works for a little while. But then the geese, the geese start squawking. And the townspeople find him and haul him to the church where he is ambush ordained. And at the very first dinner following his appointment, Martin made sure that one of those dastardly geese was on the table as revenge for their betrayal. So now on his feast day in Germany and a couple of other countries around Europe, it is traditional to prepare a goose, usually the first goose of the season, to commemorate the treachery. Martin did try to be a good bishop, despite the fact that he never wanted to sit in the bishop's fancy chair, and he never wanted to sleep in the bishop's nice quarters. He tried. He set himself up in a cell attached to the church, but he had the same problem there that he had back home. People kept bothering him. People kept coming to see him and learn from him, and he never had any quiet or any time to pray. So he ran away. He found himself a cave in a cliff overlooking the ocean, and for a brief while, he had peace. Guess what happened there? Just guess. You betcha. <laughs> the townsfolk followed him and set up their own little their own little caves in the cliff so they could live with him and that too grew up into a monastery eventually martin said okay okay you got me i'll go do bishop things so he spent the next decade or so traveling around, spreading the good word, building churches, and, you know, converting the heathens, putting down pagan temples. But you, you know what? I forgive him for that because he thought he was doing a good thing. It's in the past now. On November 8th in the year 397, Martin took ill and died. It is said that his last words were, Lord, if your people still need me, I do not refuse the work. Your will be done. He was buried on November 11th, which is now his feast day. He is the patron saint of soldiers, horses, poor people and those who help them, geese, and me. I claim him. He's my bay now. I resonate with Martin's story on just a bone-deep soul level. It hit me so hard in the jellies that I immediately knew we had a karmic connection. <laughs> All I want every minute of every day of my life is to be left alone and to have quiet. <laughs> And I get none of that. At work, I thought, if I did a really good job and I got ahead, maybe I could go home just a little bitty bitty bit early or something. No. They gave me more jobs. And I said no. And they were like, congratulations, here's your extra jobs. <laughs> so I'm making this candle for St. Martin, my new favoritist guy. And I will be petitioning him for a little bit of peace and quiet this holiday season. I don't really know what he likes as far as offerings. I haven't found any information on that yet. Um, I mean, the candle is his. It's dedicated to him. And I will be burning it tonight, November 11th, his feast day. And I plan on sharing a little bit of dinner with him too. I have a chicken, not a goose. We've done the goose thing before. It took us a month to finish that thing. Never again. <laughs> so he'll have to forgive me for that. Um, but I just, I think a simple little, little show of affection is enough to get a good rapport going right now. The light in here sucks. 
so I'm gonna have to take you some pictures so you can see him. But I love him so much. 